Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So most of you have seen my previous video and you guys wanted, you guys were just dying to see the Tico 32 in action as well as the DYS Aria. However, in this video I'm going to be showing you the Tico 32 and some of the things that I've been playing around with today and just found were pretty interesting. However, I wanted to take this further but due to the power supply or the way I'm applying power to the motors, it's very un consistent so i've also basically graphed the rpms torque thrust uh amperage vibrations i've done old temperature but since the power source is very unreliable i'm basically using two brand new infinity batteries and you know batteries they're good but you know they're just not consistent so uh that's the reason why i didn't go into full detail and what i have done is i've just ordered a nice big power supply to enable me to uh, to get consistent power to these motors and these ESCs to have the real consistent tests. I wanted to see how low ESR capacitors can actually hinder or boost performance, you know, in bad ESCs and in good ESCs. For example, the Tico 32-bit ESC is one of the best, it is the best ESC so far I've ever tested in my life or used. And I wanted to see if a low ESR capacitor can actually reduce its performance or maybe increase it. And if on a bad ESC, does a low ESR capacitor improve its performance or decrease it? However, I wasn't really able to get any really solid measurements because of the inconsistency of the power that's being applied to them. So I've gone ahead and ditched that and I'm waiting for that power supply to arrive so we can do those BL Heli timings and we can do all the BL Heli settings and, and just play with all that stuff and seeing torque, thrust, RPM, uh, just all of that stuff as well as noise. So that's going to have to wait about a week, I think, till it gets here. I just ordered it from AliExpress. I looked all over Europe. The cheapest one was like 1,500 euros. And there was another one that was cheap, around 700 euros, which was like around $900. But it was just sold out. It's been sold out for actually the past three weeks I've been monitoring it. So I just decided to just take a gamble on AliExpress. Hopefully it's good. I just basically used all the Patreon money on that. So, yeah. Anyways. Um, I mean, we need it, so we really need it to get these kind of measurements. So what I've done instead today is I am bringing you this noise graph. Now, um, I found this to actually be pretty interesting in the amount of noise reduction that is possible with a low ESR capacitor. Now, what we are doing here is static throttle levels. So we're just increasing the throttle levels from 10%. I have that 10% throttle level at the beginning, just in case something bad happens. Like the other test I did the other day, the EC didn't initialize correctly. And, you know, if it went full throttle, you know, I, don't, I don't want anything, I don't want to burn anything. So that's why I have that pre 10% throttle to see if anything's going to go bad. I could quickly stop it. So as you can see here, uh, the first line on all the graphs is 10% throttle, and then it's 25%, 50, 75, 100% throttle. However, each of them varies in the amount of noise being generated. Now, the top left here is the Racer Star V2. The top right is the Tico 32 without low ESR capacitors, and the bottom is with low ESR capacitor. So the bottom left is the V2, with low ESR capacitor and the bottom right is the Tico with low ESR capacitor. So like I mentioned, I wanted to see if the low ESR capacitor would hinder performance. However, I wasn't able to get any solid data because of the way I'm powering them. But what we can do is we can take a look at the huge amount of difference a 330 microfarad 25 volt Panasonic low ESR capacitor makes in ESC noise. And it is dramatic. It was just insane. So let's take a look here. So the top left is the Racer Star V2, and as you can see, around 50% to 75%, it just becomes absolutely noisy. And at 100% here, it seems that it's absolutely inefficient because for some reason they're very inefficient between I think 60 to 80% throttle or to 90, and then at 100% they become very efficient uh, in the way they're actually controlling their phases. So here, the Racer Star basically gets like a uh, an F or a D um, compared to other ESCs. Now, if we move to the Tico, the Tico 32 without a low ESR capacitor is just, it's gorgeous. It's really, really, really nice. Like very nice. And the thing is, this is not even noise, if believe it or not. When we zoom in, this is actually a sine wave. And the sine wave is just, 
a perfect beautiful sine wave which is just that's what's going through in there that's it's an alternating current that's what the motor needs to run so that's getting pushed back and it has to go somewhere so you know dc dc circuits with ac circuits you know they're, they're not good friends they can't get along so you always have some kind of you know noise coming back into the system and there's a lot of other variables we'll get into that later on it's just it's a very detailed and specific topic we'll keep that for another day now uh once i applied now before i applied actually the low ESR capacitor to the race star v2 i was wondering will the tico 32 still be better in terms of noise and voltage spikes and voltage drops now i didn't know because what i've done first is i did the testing on the racer star v2 and then i went for the tico 32 it just makes my life a little bit easier now on, on the bottom left we have the racer star v2 with the low ESR capacitor and as you can see it's done maybe we could say it's done a little bit better than the Tico 32 without a low ESR capacitor, but does that does that mean it's better? No, it doesn't mean that it's better. Um, it, it's gonna the, the time we will know that if it's actually better um, is once I have that stable power supply, then the, the consistent power supply, then we could actually see this data. So what we can see here is that it, there's a huge amount of reduction of noise, um, about. You could say about 80% of the noise is gone on the higher peaks. Um, so it is filtering the very, very nasty spikes and, and voltage spikes and dips. Um, so as you can see here with the low ESR capacitor, our max voltage spike was 19.4. And before it was 29.4. That's a 10, that's exactly 10 volt difference right there. Now let's go to the voltage drop. Now the Raystar V2 with a low ESR capacitor uh, voltage drop was 10.8 volts. And with a low ESR capacitor, 14.6 volts. So there is, there is, there's, there's a big difference here. 10.8 volts on a 12 volt regulator, that's a VTX blackout. Um, here, that 14 volts, that's nothing. Everything is still working absolutely fine. <clears throat> So that's for the low ESR capacitor, and obviously I could hear it in the motor, it's running a lot smoother. So that's a huge plus also. Now let's move to the Tico 32. The Tico 32, I don't know if I was hallucinating, but even the motor without the low ESR capacitor sounded smoother than the racer start with the capacitors. Now, I am not sure, I'm just saying this, and don't take this. So this is what I think, and I just thought I'd just let that out there. Now, what we have here on the Tico 32 um, is just, it's beautiful. It's just so consistent. And when you zoom in, um, you know what? Let's go ahead and zoom in real quick on that. All right, guys. So as you saw there, the Racer Star V2s looked a lot better than the Tico 32 with a low ESR capacitor. However, that's not really the case. Uh, what you have to do here is we have to zoom in on the Tico 32 and see how it looks like. And we're zooming in and look at that that is a beautiful sine wave you see there's no sharp points that's just that's just very good that's one of the best things possible because it's just it's so clean and as you can see most ESCs or probably all ESCs tend to run the noisiest at 75% throttle for some reason and we will be going in detail to check this out but this is just absolutely like I said before, this is the best ESC. I've, I've done the real world testing. I'm still actually using it. And um, I, I, I don't think there's going to be a good one like this out for another while. So as you can see here, we have, what is that? We have, so it's five volt per division. So from the middle part to this, to up here, it's five volts. So uh, as we can see here, that it's just gone up about one volt right here, which is pretty, pretty, it's actually very good. That's just very good. Here it's just a voltage drop on full throttle, but um, this is just uh, absolutely phenomenal. All right, so it's just absolutely consistent, and it's just a beautiful sine wave, and it's just it's 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 gorgeous. Now let's go to low ESR capacitor here with the low ESR capacitor. Now this is almost identical now with the Racer Star V2s. However, if you take a closer look here, I wonder if I could zoom in. Nope, that's not zooming in. It's switching. Okay. So if you take a look here, it's, you know, you, you're still having those spikes right there. Um, those little weird hiccup, hip, hiccup moments right there. Now, if you take a look here, this is a 75% throttle. It's hard to see the 10% throttle because it's just so clean. This is the 10% throttle 
which would be just like this 10% throttle. However, we could see these from the transitions. Here, the transitions are just so good that you know you can't you can barely tell. So let's go back to the 75% throttle here. Look how clean that is. I mean, it's still noise, but look how clean that is. That is just a one volt drop right there. That's all it is. This here is about. It's also a one volt drop and does have some peaks right there and it has about a one to two yeah one one and a half volt spike around this area but this is just look at that it's just it's, it's if when I zoomed in it was just a sine wave just going in just harmony and beauty so I can't wait till that power supply gets here I really cannot I absolutely cannot so another thing to take a look here take a look at this right here now can you see the top edges are are slightly darker on the tico 32 and if you look here it's just you know you really have just this like this one line that's kind of dark and then everywhere else it's just it's um it's not very symmetrical it's not very it's just all over the place but if you this is going on due to that sine waving motion right there which is just it's clean it's a good ESC and I've tested it and I know it's a good ESC and I wouldn't be saying this a million times if I didn't know it was a good ESC um, as you can see here with the low star capacitor this looks kind of weird on the Tico 32 bit ESC and this is what I meant because here it's running I think absolutely perfect but you know we can't tell just yet until we get that power supply but it looks like it's running good this is without the low star capacitor the Tico 32 and here with the low easter capacitor it has these weird little hiccuping moments down here but you know it could be anything but um i really don't know just yet until i get that and i can actually start looking at the data where it actually when, it, when it's consistent you can actually see the difference and calculate and make sure but if, if i show you the excel sheets right now it just doesn't make sense you know they're just all over the place i could run the same you know try to get an average it's it's um, it's really inconsistent and I don't think it's real data okay maybe we could see a couple things but maybe with the power supply we see something completely different and that's where I'm going with this I want consistent testing and um, yeah I just thought this was interesting and if you guys wanted to see the difference between low ESR capacitor I will be doing low ESR capacitor shootouts I will be doing uh, the brand of the low ESR capacitors LC filters I will do the DYS ARIA versus the DY the Tico 32 um, like head to head like very detailed and I had a commenter yesterday one of you guys commented on one of my videos saying we need to see stress testing on ESC so basically you guys just want me to burn the ESCs so that will be possible with the new power supply and I'll be more than happy to do that I have no problem that is what I'm here for and um, I would actually love to see it myself also so um, I think that's it guys so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, if you really like this content please consider supporting me on patreon joining the mission help me keep doing this and I'll keep just uploading and creating better and better content I'll research document and just do everything I can and um, make it easy to see and understand and I do apologize the Excel sheets not ready however I'm gonna add this data to the Excel sheet and um, it should be up I will have a separate uh, tab on my website where you could download the ESC Excel sheet so uh, if you're in a hurry you just keep checking up checking over there um, I sh hopefully I will be doing it today uh, if not it's tomorrow because I'm halfway done with it but I'm still trying to make a nice layout that is very easy to understand and I don't know how to add these pictures into each ESC just yet and or should I make them in tabs should I make it it's just I'm trying to figure something out to make it like a nice template that's just super easy to search through read and understand that is why it took so long I do have all the data it's right there I've, I'm just constantly taking all the data and make sure I'm recording it correctly and well, that's it, guys. So consider helping me, joining me on Patreon. It would be super awesome. It would really help the channel a lot. And uh, if you can't, that's totally fine also. You could also use the links down there. Uh, they do support the channel. They, I get a couple cents every time you make a purchase from Banggood. Uh, what you can, you don't even have to purchase the same exact product that I put in the link. You can just press the link before you make your purchase. I get a couple cents, and I'll be able to get more ESCs and do more testing. And it'll really support the channel and help me do more. And uh, just give it away when we're done because I really don't need to keep all this stuff. I just want to test this stuff. I have plenty of stuff. I have my own stuff that I like. All I need is two quads. I don't need any more. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So I will be doing giveaways this month for the Patreons and YouTube. Patreon will have slightly a couple sweet 
uh, builds, micros, which is the Jeb RC, and uh, I still don't know, I haven't made up my mind on the second micro quadcopter. Um, and, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think, and I uh, will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.